Hey everyone. So it's been a while since I've done some Azure Databricks videos. So in this one, I think I would show just how easy it is to connect to Azure Blob Storage to get and write data to. Create a new notebook here. I'll just say Blob Storage. It's going to be Python. And I already have a cluster running. All right, and a couple of things here. We're going to need our storage account name. This is just the name of our Azure Blob Storage account here. So I have one called Databricks Demo Storage. Then we're going to need the account key. And I'll paste this in. And I'll be regenerating this key after this video. So it's okay that y'all can see it here. And I'm going to create a variable for the container I'm going to use, which is called input. So I'll run that real quick. All right. So the easiest way to do this is to set a Spark configuration variable. And to do that, we do spark that conf and then that set on that. And I'll do an f string here in Python. And the string is going to be fs.azure.account.key. And then we need to give it the account name. So I'm bringing the variable here towards account name. And then that blob.core.windows.net. And we need to set the account key to this variable here so that's a second parameter and that's where I send my storage account key so we run this that got run and now let's use the dbutils.fs.ls command to take a look at our storage account and we can do that with specific address here wasbs colon slash slash and then we need our container at our storage account name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net oh, it's like a messed up here storage account key was in place of storage account name so let's rerun that and i'll rerun our ls command there we go we have one item it has to retrain housing data csv and by the way we can also use the fs magic command in here with ls and then use the wasbs uh, i think in here we have to type it out manually instead of using our variables up here databricks demo storage dot blob dot core windows net there you go we get a much nicer display here but we still get this one item returning back and we can see what's on there let's actually read this file from there Make sure that works okay. So we get a data frame and we do spark.read and we do a couple options here. First, the header is going to be true, that has a header on it. Another option, and we'll say infer schema, we'll tell it to try to infer the schema that's in our data set here. And the last option, give it a delimiter, it's going to be the, it's going to be a colon. And then the CSV, do another F string here. And actually, we're going to pretty much take this same thing here. It's going to be the retrain housing data that CSV. All right, so that ran successfully. It looks like we have our schema here. And we can also do a df.show to show our data here. That looks good. So we're able to read from our Azure Blob storage here. Another thing we can do, we can actually mount the storage into, into a Databricks file storage. And to do that, we do dbutils fs.mount. It's gonna take a couple of parameters. The source is gonna be this same thing here that we use to read in our storage account. And then the mount point that I believe needs to start with slash mnt and then we can give it whatever name that we want after that so i'll say storage and then we need to give it an extra configs item here and this is going to be a dictionary this is going to be another f string so fs dot azure dot account dot key dot to give the storage account account name and then the blob core.windows.net and then we'll set this dictionary key 
then the value is going to be the storage account key. So we run that. All right, that ran OK, and we have our new mount on our Databricks file system. And to double check, we can use dbutils.fs.mounts method. We have a few mounts here, uh, but and here is our one that we just did. And we can kind of do the same thing that we did up here when we read from our Azure storage location. We can do the same thing and read from our Databricks mount here. So let's change this. We'll need an F string here. So slash MNT slash storage. And then our data set that we want. And that ran successfully. And we'll do another show just to make sure. And there we go. We have all, all that there. And we can also write to our Databricks storage as well. So let's paste this in. I'm going to create a new data frame with another row for our data set here. And we'll show on that real quick. There you go. So we've got our a new row here. And we can write using data.write.csv. First, I'm going to use the, the first way with that WASBS location. So we do that. And I'm call it new. And that ran. So let's look at our storage explorer here. We'll refresh this. And there's that new item that we just added. And because Spark wrote it, we get these parts here. And I think this one is the one with the actual data in it. But if you're like me and you don't always want to write the data this way, we can use pandas here. And the Spark data frame has that two pandas method on it. So it creates a pandas data frame. And with our pandas data frame, we can do two CSV on it. And I'm going to write it to our Databricks file storage here. So I do slash dbfs slash file store slash tables. And then I'll give it a name. I'll call it pandas.csv. And I need to tell what encoding to use. So I use utf8. It helps if I spell my variables correctly. There we go. That ran. And just to double check our pandas data frame, we can do a head on it. There we go. There's our one item. And we can double check our Databricks file storage using the fs magic command. So dbfs colon slash file store slash tables. And there it is. It's our pandas csv right there. And another way I want to show is other than using the built-in Databricks ways that we showed up here. Because this is Python, we can also use the Azure Blob Storage Python SDK. And we can install that using dbutils.library.install pi. And it's going to be the azure.storage.blob library that we're going to install. So that installed correctly. And next we need a connection string to connect to our blob storage. So I just paste this in. Once again, I'll be regenerating this account key. We'll import from azure.storage.blob we'll import blob client class and then we can create a client using blob client dot from connection string we'll pass in our connection string given a container name of input and then the blob name is going to be pandas.csv and because we have the file in our Databricks file storage, we can open that up. So with open and then slash dbfs file store slash tables and then pandas csv. We're going to read in the bytes and as f and then the client the upload blob and then pass in the data. So do that. So that ran real quick. We'll refresh this. And there's our pandas csv right there. And just to double check, we can actually download this as well. So new data, so we do client.download blob. And we can view it, new data, that content as text. There you go. So it downloaded our, our file from Azure Blob Storage. All right, so I'll end things there. There's just a couple ways in which you can interact with Azure Blob Storage within your Azure Databricks notebook. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.